Okay, as you can see, I've got a new Reaper project. Uh, one thing I want you to understand is Reaper comes out with a lot of uh, upgrades to programs. And if you upgrade, things are going to change. They're going to move around. The concepts are still the same, but things move around. i um, give you an example. Just since I've been making these videos over the last month, they've upgraded the program three times, two or three times. So um, some of this is going to look a little different, but the concepts are still the same. So to excuse me, add a track. We're just going to add an audio track. The first thing I'm going to talk about is recording your own voice or another instrument. So I'm going to go insert new track. You can do that with command T as well. Um, now the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're actually getting audio into Reaper and you can do that in two different areas. So if you look at the track that got inserted up in the up in the uh, tracks menu here, uh, there's a record arm button. If I record that you will now see my voice being recorded right here and if you go down to the track uh, view down mixer view down here you can do the same thing down in the mixer view so if I, I click on this this will arm the track you can see that my voice is being recorded you want to be careful not to record too hot a signal if I clap notice it up here the signal got hot and that means in that case you're recording distortion so when you're actually recording this you want to keep an eye on this right here uh, to deselect it to re reselect it, I guess, click on it again, it'll go away. So you want to be really careful not to record distortion. Now, if you're not getting an audio signal, so if you've armed the record on the track, you're not getting an audio signal, you want to go up to File, or I'm sorry, Reaper, and you want to go to Preferences. And then over on the left-hand column, there's Audio, and you're going to click on Device. And the Audio Device menu up here, there's a pull-down menu, and you want to select your device. So there's a variety of devices. Sys default system devices should work. In this case, I'm using the computer um, inputs and outputs. If you have an audio interface connected to your computer, you'll select that device. That's a whole other topic, which I'm not going to get into in the realm of this course. But if you have one, you can contact me, and I'll try to help walk you through it. So I'm going to arm my track for recording, and I'm just going to make a simple little recording here. So once I've armed and I'm seeing that I'm actually getting a signal down here, I go up to the record button or I can go command R on Mac and it will record so you don't actually have to use the mouse. So I'll go command R. T-E-S-T-I-N-G, testing makes a fool of me, testing. Hit the space bar. Now, before you do anything else, this is important. I want to make sure I, I, I name this file something that, that um, I know what it is. So, you know, this 01402048-1350 doesn't tell me much. So I'm going to click on it, select it, and I'm going to go down here and go rename selected. In this case, I'll go testing vocal. I'll know what it is. And you're going to find out why this is important later. So now it's called testing vocal. I'll go save all. So now if I hit the playback, I'll, I'll unarm my track up here. So I'm no longer... A recording. T E S T I N G, testing makes a fool of me. And one thing to, to sort of keep an eye on is your levels. Um, now, if you notice right here, I have a fairly robust level, it means it's, it's a good, good wave signal. It, it's not, it has a good signal to noise ratio, and you can T -E -S -T -I -N -G, watch your levels right down here. Testing makes a fool of me. And I'm not distorting, so that's fine. So that's how you do a track. Now, I already talked about. Um, importing sample sounds. So I'm just going to import one quick. I have this guitar loop right here. I'm just going to import that in and I just drag it right into Reaper. And now it's going to play alongside my vocal track. I mean I did this in reverse. Normally you'd sing over a loop. And I'm going to lower the guitar loop a little bit volume wise right here so it'll sort of mix with T-E-S-T-I-N-G Testing makes a fool of me so now I have this nice little little sound thing happening. And again, you can add effects to your voice. You can add panning, stereo, all that stuff we've already discussed. Now to save this as an audio file, we're going to go up to File, and we're going to go to Render. And we've already talked about this, so I'm going to call this Testing Groove, or Testing Loop. Let's call it Testing Loop 1. All right. And I'm saving this to the desktop. You can see where it says Rick P Desktop. Uh, and if you, you know, the directory is right up here. And if you want to look for the directory, you can click, click on the browse. I would always save it to the desktop 
just because or render to the desktop because you'll be able to get at it quickly. So um, I'm saving it as a WAV file down here. Uh, note of warning, if you want to save it as an MP3 uh, encoder, you're going to have to use a, a software thing called Lame. You're going to have to um, download that and install it. That's a whole other process, and it's, it's not that complex, but it's complex enough. So WAV file will be fine, 16-bit right here. And I'm just going to go to um, render one file, and you'll get a dialog box that shows you what the render status is. This happened instantly, so you can just go close. And then if you notice up on my desktop, there's my testing loop, and I can hear it. T-E-S-T-I-N-G. There it is. So now I have my testing loop. Now, to save a project, a whole project including audio, anything else that you have in there, um, you can go to File, Save. I'm just going to go, if you go up to the um, File menu, you can go to Save All Projects. In this case, I'll call this Testing Loop Project. So I know it's a project. Now, this is important right here. I'm going to save it to my desktop again so I know where it is. And it's, you're going to make sure these two boxes are, are selected here. Create subdirectory for project, copy all media. Because the idea is if you ever have to launch this again, you want the media in with the same folder. That way it won't have to go looking for it or you'll, you won't lose it. So go save. And when you do this, Reaper automatically creates a folder. So there's my testing loop project right here. So if I launch this Reaper project where it says testing loop project, it will automatically load these two loops in. Now what I usually do is because I have my sample testing loop right here, I'll go create a new folder right in the project folder. And I'm going to call this mix downs. All right. Um, can't type today. So there's my mix downs. And I'll open that folder up and I'll just drag my testing loop in there. So now when I go to this project, I have all my loops, all my audio, everything I need in this. So if I move this to another computer or somewhere else, I know that it's, it's um, right there. So um, that should help you. Um, and we'll move on to the next lecture.